Um, I think it, I think it is enormously disappointing that quite so many, and almost verging on unbelievable, that quite so many councillors have been unable to attend on this occasion, given given that, that there was notice and um, and um, that there are is a possibility of having substitutes. So for, for quite such a large proportion, um, as has been suggested, particularly from one political group and from one geographical area, to be to make them to, to not be available does seem surprising. However, I think um, for us to spend too long this morning kind of expressing our um, extreme irritation at having come in for a meeting which is not called um, would not necessarily be the best use of our time. So I think having expressed our um, extreme irritation, there are um, a couple of things that, so, so we can continue to discuss um, the issues that, that we were going to discuss this morning, which I think might well be valuable um, with um, the officers who have kindly um, agreed to discuss that with us. Um, I think there is also a question about whether or not this means that we ought to be um, reviewing the constitutional arrangements for the um, for the process of calling and whether there are things that need to be reviewed, both in terms of the time scales and in terms of what makes a meeting call it, because I think that um, the quorum for this meeting is unusually high, um, and I know that um, uh, Kim Sawyer was going to be looking at whether or not it was within our um, ability to change that or whether that was something that was set set statutory. So I don't know what we would like to do. Thank you, Chair. And we have um, looked at that. It is in fact contained within the regulations. Um, these are regulations made specifically for combined authority uh, scrutiny committees. And Regulation 3 says that you are actually required to have a quorum of two thirds. So the, the size of the committee is um, discretionary. And um, the size of the committee is set by uh, two representatives from each of the constituent councils, which is how we end up at 14, um, and therefore giving you a quorum of 10. So I meant by my hand. I'm um, really sure. Uh, Councillor Gary. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, think, I think there's a real constitutional problem here, because I think the combined authority cannot work without this scrutiny committee. It's a sine qua non for the operation of the combined authority. And if this situation of willful blockage continues, we would potentially run into uh, a complete shutdown, in my view, of the combined authority. So I would actually urge the chair to take relatively drastic measures, uh, sending letters to the um, councils, um, the, the councils themselves that weren't represented on this important scrutiny meeting today. Because if we continue this fashion, each time the scrutiny committee meets, you know, certain members, certain councils decide not to send any representatives, then effectively that would mean we're shutting down the combined authority. And I think that's a, a far-reaching consequence, or we're allowing the mayor to act uh, and the board to act without any scrutiny, which is against the, the legal rules for devolved authorities. I intervene, please, Chair, because I think we're drifting into the position now where it sounds as if you're going to make a recommendation or a decision of some sort, and I think, obviously, clearly, we're not, we can't do that um, because we're not corporate, and therefore we can't transact any business. So I suggest, Chair, that this might be a suitable point at which you draw the meeting to a close, and then if you would like to have any discussion um, on legal issues or any other issues, I'm happy to do that with the scrutiny committee. Um, I, I want to make one point, which is that we do have, I mean, the, the questions that have been raised about the, the future of scrutiny and, and what, what might happen if this were to happen again, and I think if it were to happen again, that would be a, um, a cause for very great concern. Um, in fact, this is a matter for the members of the scrutiny committee at this stage, and we do have another scrut combined authority scrutiny meeting in um, around 10 days' time. Um, that meeting would not have been able to deal with this business because this was a call-in of a decision and that had to be taken within 10 days and I think that is a problem but um, we do have
raise this matter of um, attendance and the um, what appears to be the subversion of um, a proper scrutiny yes. process um, uh, at that meeting, and I'm quite sure that a number of members will want to do that because um, I think this is, has not been a satisfactory meeting. Uh, I, I won't draw this meeting to a close until people have finished wanting to discuss this this particular element, but I do think it's also important for us to to have some discussion of the matter about which we were supposed to be meeting this morning rather than about the uh, functioning of the scrutiny committee. So I think I had Councillor Shopping first and then Councillor Adam. Um, I'm, 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, at the meeting where we all travelled uh, up to March and Pennant um, for, the, for our previous uh, review scrutiny committee meeting, when it was clear that we were going to have this uh, request to call it was questioned at the time whether we could just continue straight on to discuss that. Um, now, that may not have been the usual way of doing it, but it certainly would have meant everyone was there. And maybe that's another thing to consider. I mean, is there yeah. anything in the Constitution that says you cannot go straight into another meeting when immediately we were, those of us that, that uh, sort of voted to say that we should at least have a meeting to request this to call them, had already signed uh, uh, to that effect straight away. Everyone was there present. We travel that distance. Can we, in future, go straight into the meeting to actually scrutinise that decision rather than having to come back in ten days' time once official papers have been published, which will basically be the same information, the, the, in this case the, uh, the transport statement, um, and just go straight on with that decision it, it, as a, a means of avoiding this kind of um, in court situation? So one um, possibility, we, we had during the course of last year, at the Interagency Committee last year, quite a lot of discussion about the, the timing of meetings. And it was decided during the course of last year that, that the Overview and Scrutiny Committee meetings should be um, on the Monday prior to the board meeting on Wednesday so that we could present our views to the board um, as an overview committee rather than as a scrutiny committee. Um, one option would be for us instead to revert to holding our meetings as standard on the Monday after the board was met, at which point we would then be able to probably manage any calling business at the same meeting because the, the decision would have been taken. Um, it means that we would be less able to commit to fulfil our overview function, but but better able to uh, to fulfil our scrutiny function. Um, and if that ends up, I mean, if, if that is felt to be a more important um, position for the committee to be in, then that is definitely something that we could consider at the next meeting. It looks to me as if Peter, do you want to come back? Well, uh, so I, I, I just want to place on the record that if the reason why South Cambridgeshire District Council is represented at this meeting is because the Greater Cambridge Partnership funding of hundreds of millions of pounds is, in our view, essential to you know, the future prosperity of the county, and particularly of South Cambridgeshire. And I was looking forward, without prejudice, to having a discussion and to learn more about the decision to freeze, in effect, freeze that money by the courts. And I'm disappointed that we have not had that opportunity. Without prejudice. Thank you very much. I think that brings us um, neatly to, to, to the um, closure of this part of the meeting where we discuss the fact that we are not a chorus and we cannot therefore meet. And I suggest that we therefore close the meeting, which was never really open.